Hello there, my name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting comfy. <laughs> Ignore me. Okay, today I want to use, I've got hold of some um, <sighs> cleaning cloth. Uh, I've managed to buy a quarter of a metre and I do have some projects planned for it. The project I want to do today is I want an emergency use slip cover to go over a broom head. Now we all know that these steam mops, well we've all seen them for sale haven't we? So what I'm going to do is literally use my broom head as a as a sizer. Now I'm going to give myself loads and loads of room to go so round. Now this stuff frays like nobody's business. So we've got to find a way of sealing in all the loose ends. There's no two ways about it. Now that's all fine. We can do that. It is going to be tricky to sew because it's fluffy. It's fluffy. Now the way I think is the easiest, and I might be wrong, is to use what we call a French seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this is the fold edge, this is the unfolded edge, and I'm going to sew probably four inches and probably four inches. And I'm going to sew it the right side up because I'm going to turn it inside out and I'm going to seal those seams. Now I would choose your foot um, very carefully because it's, it, you'll probably get caught up. Now I am using what is called a quilting foot. But any foot will do. You just have to keep an eye on it really. And um, just do it. So that's that. I'm going to do the other side now. And I'm giving myself loads of hem allowance, I really am. Now if you're making it for your own steam mop, um, they all have their own different sizes. So just take a little uh, mould of uh, paper mould and then do it around that. Now what I want to do next is split this and then do another seam on the outer edge but I'm going to do it if anything like a triangle. Okay there's a reason for this it's just so that it lies nice and flat if you were doing it on your own mould. the vac steam mops they've got a triangular one and you can buy replacement mop covers they are I think I'm probably wrong 20 pounds for three and you get and you have to pay postage which is a bit tricky isn't it so yes um do you remember what I said about the um, feet getting caught up well I've just done that now rather than trimming the fabric, I chose to release the foot and give it a good wiggle. It is the hardest part of this sew, it really is. And okay, just going over the seam now, that's a slight difference in pitch. inside out and we do the final sew then it's a lot easier so just sorting out where everything is I do feel the need to cut off a triangle and show you how much this stuff springs out but okay so we're just going to get it started now and yeah I am pulling it from the back it's because it doesn't really grip and 
when you're pulling something, it's a good idea not to pull it too much that you actually bend the needle. So let's see what it does there. That's it. Okay, just going over the seam. Nothing. Okay, so yes, it's tricky, but you have the advantage that you can choose the colour you'd like. So I'm turning it inside out now. Now I'm not too worried about these bulky seams. If you've got a stubborn bit of dirt, then these bulky seams are quite good to give it a good scratch. But um, obviously, I don't think I should say that, should I? So what I'm doing now is I've turned it inside out and I'm going over those seams in the order that I put the first ones in. So I've got the top one and this is literally to seal in all those loose ends. I'm going to pull it out, obviously it's nice and thick now so it's going to be a bit tricky. It's worth it and it's no problem at all. I'm going to do the other top one. started to go on to the other things and wiggle it out again and there we are and we're just going to seal the fat seam in as well so that all these loose ends they're all caught up and you need to think about it as you're doing it where the seam ends you're not sewing over the previous seam so again we've got quite far in this stuff is so stretchy as well so if it does feel like you're making it very very small then that's fine because of, let's face it it's got loads of stretch in it lovely i'm going to help it over the the seam in the center and get that tucked under and then we can go down again and a couple more stitches because it's hitting the actual older stitches, the first line of stitches. It's not complaining about sewing the material. So now we've come off the seam and we're just going to do a couple of more stitches. Lovely. So we need to do that on both sides. I don't know whether to do it now or to... I'll do it now. Sorry, waste your time. I suppose I could move on to the next step. You don't need to see it twice. When it's nicely on, I'm going to double stitch. I'm going to hold the seam in the middle, which is quite thick, and I'm going to assist it by moving that under. And there we go. So it's just hitting the stitches now. It doesn't like it. Now, if you do come to a bit that's a bit thicker, then you can always help it with your dial thing. Lovely. Now when I said this stuff really frays, what I didn't say was the stuff that's in between the stitches doesn't fray. So it's just these um, sticky out bits that really fray. So we've got this inside out now. Uh, I can turn it around just to show you that it's a nice domey thing. Just like the ones you've bought, although they were using proper industrial sewing machines. Now to get it to stay on, we need either elastic and toggle, which can be quite hard to get hold of, or we can just use elastic. Now I quite like doing this. You basically, you get it all lined up, so you've got your fabric, and you've got your nice piece of elastic underneath there and give it a good few stitches 
before you start to pull it because I've been amazed how many stitches you can pull out by doing this. And then with this tool, you just allow the sewing machine to sew it. And if it's having trouble gripping, then you can just ease it through as well. So I've got to keep the fluffy bits out of the way because I don't want to sew too many in. I've got to keep an eye on the underside of the opening that I'm not catching it with the stitches and I've got to keep an eye that I'm actually sewing this elastic. So there we go, just got a bit caught up there. And away we go again. With the same bit of elastic I need to just do this other side so I can get that all under the machine a couple of strong stitches again before I start to sew and away I go so turning the fabric as I need to Yes, it is but tricky um, and fiddly and if you're not used to using a sewing machine then it's a bit of a pain. But just remember, cut as little as you can of the spiky bits and or try and sew in all your seams as well. So there we go. We've got nice solid bobbly bits at the end for scrubbing away. And then all we need to do is get our mop head, or um, I'm using a broom head. And this is just so that I can put a bit of detergent on the floor and then I can mop up nice and quickly. So yeah, do be careful that you've lived, left yourself a big enough hole. And um, if it is tight like this, it may be an idea just to turn it over and put it in the solid side first because it's the bristles that I'm having trouble getting in. So there we are. <laughs> I'm sure it's a practice thing. And there we are. Oh, there we go. That would have been easier if I'd... Yeah, one stray thread. There we are. So... Well, I hope that's been beneficial to you, and um, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you again. So what I'd do is I'd just put the handle on there and put a squirt through and then use it like a normal broom, and then I can take this off and then put it in the washing machine, so without damaging the broom. But, to be honest with you, when you do put it on for the first time, do make sure that you've actually untucked it properly, and then... Yes, put one end in and then the other, because that works so much better. Okay, well, thank you for watching. My name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. There we are. A bit easier with practice. <laughs>